Today, we're gonna to take a pretty simple look at the different lubes we can apply to our drivetrains and the effects for better or for worse they might have. So I've cut my chain up, a used one, into some sample sizes and we're gonna put different types of lubricant on them and we're gonna introduce them to a different array of external factors. First on the list of our options of lubricant is wet lube. So on the bottle here, it says it's to keep the chain running smooth in wet and muddy conditions. So think about your winters really is where it comes into its own. It goes on like a liquid and it tends to almost stay that way. So when you get that kind of dark oil sitting on top of your drivetrain, it's usually thanks to this. Harder wearing than dry lube for sure, but can be a little bit messy, especially if you put too much on. Next, we have dry lube. So this is for your dry and dusty conditions. So I'm thinking summer months where there isn't so much dirt and mud on the trails. Now this definitely runs cleaner than wet lube, but it doesn't tend to last so long if you do get your bike covered in mud, grit or water. It goes on as a liquid, but it tends to cure to form a film that sits on top of the chain. Now we're gonna run one batch of our samples with no lube on whatsoever, just as a control. But for the other two, we're gonna use non-drivetrain specific lubes, but things we often get asked about. So straight out of the pantry, we have some olive oil. First pressings too, as we're feeling a bit fancy. Next, we have fix of oil elements right up there with holy water and gin and tonic. Of course, it's WD-40. Now this is still the choice for some road riders who want a really efficient chain that's gonna stay quiet, if only for about 30 minutes. Now, believe it or not, we want a pretty tight ship here, but we're not quite NASA. So we've got our quite simple shaker box, which I'm gonna include dirt, mud, or even just water, which we're gonna run our chains through. Now, we're hopefully gonna give the chains time to let their lube settle in adequately to hopefully reflect how you would do it in the real world. One big difference compared to what you might do on your own bike is we're not gonna wipe the excess lube off. This is to hopefully exaggerate any potential draws or bonuses of the lube itself. Now, you might find that I can't recreate here that kind of high drag, grinding grit stuff that you do find clags up your drivetrain. And quite frankly, I'm not even gonna try. Hopefully, this is just a quite easy test to show you the benefits and potential drawbacks of any lubricant. And a clever bunch like you can extrapolate the information you need before projecting it onto a perhaps more real world situation. So here in my little Tupperware container, I've got probably a couple of hundred grams of the, the finest English mud I could find. When I say mud, it's more of a kind of a dirt, sandy consistency right now. And one by one, I'm just gonna go through each variety of lubricant and add the chain. So I'll start off with the dry lube. Pop it straight in. I'm not scared. And then I think right about now. That's, that's the amount. So I'm gonna dig out my chain. Little bits of lubricant on there. I'm gonna give it a bit of a tap. So I'm gonna pop that there. And I'm gonna do the same with the wet lube. In it goes. The box is sealed shut. And away we go. So I'm just gonna run through the rest of the chains and repeat this same process. As well as the dirt, I'm now adding one section of a chain for each type of lubricant to muddy water and then to clean water to demonstrate the different protective effects of each type of lube depending upon the environment. The only instrument I was allowed to play at school was the maracas, so I had plenty of practice in this. I couldn't be trusted with anything too sophisticated. So I'm gonna leave these to do their thing overnight. I'm gonna to return tomorrow to see what I find. I think they'll be safe. I don't think they need me here anymore. And um, we'll check in tomorrow. One beer a litter. So it's a new day at GMBN Tech HQ and we're gonna have a look at our chains. So initially, straight off the bat, I'm surprised not to see more rust and that's on all of them. But I think what, what I attribute that to is when I degrease them, you know, I think the degreaser probably has some residual protective properties 
and it's not you know completely drying them out. I did wipe them down, um, and I just tried to you know make them as as bone dry as possible. But I still think there was some residual properties from that degreaser. So anyhow, on to the results. We'll start with our dry. Now the dry dusty one is actually, you know, it's, it's, it has had some dust attached to it, but it's the dust itself or the mud itself is completely dry and it's coming off like powder. So I think with a bit of chain slap or as the drive chain runs through, I think that would fall off pretty much altogether. And um, that copes actually, I'm pretty impressed considering it's not like we wiped the excess off afterwards. That was left absolutely dripping in dry lube. Going to the one with mud, similar again, it perhaps, I think actually it's pretty much taken a lot of the dry lube off it to look at it anyway. And then the water itself, well, it just looks nice and clean. No residual rust or anything like that. It doesn't feel like it's got too much oil left on there. Oh, it's got a bit, a little bit of a, maybe a light wax on there. Next, we go on to our wet lube. So immediately, this was the, the dry. So this is the difference really. It's made a kind of a clag as the oil has mixed with the dust to leave kind of a, a moisture ridden dirt. Now, as you were going through your drivetrain, you know, this dirt will be purged out of the links by things like your chain ring, but that's work that the chain ring's having to do, which not only means less efficiency, but it's basically going to wear down or exaggerate wear upon your drivetrain. So next we look at the mud and that's actually in a pretty good state. Considering that was horrible muddy water, it's actually still got a fair amount of residual lube on there. And I'm really impressed with just how much that's resisted without just completely clagging up. In terms of the water, it still looks and feels like it was just lubed, which is really, really impressive, the amount of water it managed to repel. Next we go on to the People's Champion WD-40, similar to the dry lube actually. It seems to have just left a nice little powdering. Um, and actually across the board, I would have to say the WD-40 does look one of the most impressive. Um, it's in the, in the dry, it hasn't really had that much stuff cling to it. In the mud, it still looks pretty good and has even got a slight layer of kind of protective film. And in the water, well, it looks like a brand new chain. I think the thing with WD-40 is it just burns off your drivetrain quickly. It's not that it's not a very efficient lubricant, it just it doesn't last for that long because, well, that's not what it was designed to do. Coming to the olive oil, I mean, the test we all need to know. Still smells delicious. So that's that. But it's probably, I would say, the claggiest. The, the way the oil is mixed with the mud, that mud is incredibly wet still. Even with the, the wet lube, the mud is kind of, well, when it was in the, in the dust, it hasn't dried to a kind of a wet, mulchy paste, but it's actually, yeah, kind of dried all the way through and could probably come off in dust. Whereas this is still pretty much in mud liquid floor, form. And similar with the muddy water, it's still got quite a lot of oil on there. I mean, it certainly still, still smells like it, but uh, yeah, it does okay. And then with the, just the water, it still looks like a pretty good new chain, but you know, oil and water doesn't mix, so that's not too surprising to me. And then with our test samples, as you would expect, I mean, maybe the surface isn't, doesn't tell too much of a story, but that's our muddy water one. And some of the stiffness in the links, you can just hear it. You can imagine that being magnified as you go through the pedals. So it's pretty telling, really. The dry lube definitely does seem to cope with those dry conditions better. The wet lube, well, it comes to the wet conditions better, but those ones are gonna hang about more. They're not gonna burn straight off your drivetrain. The WD-40, like I said, visually looks absolutely fantastic, but I do worry how long it would stay there for. The olive oil smells fantastic, but I worry how long it would stay there for. And well, the lack of lubricant altogether, it's not really doing much at all. And there's a lot of friction within those links. Now, if you're exhausted after all the hard hitting journalism that's gone on here and want to go back to bikes, why not check out this video I did on tubeless setup and hacks. It's quite a long video, but it's pretty comprehensive and I really recommend watching it. As always, please don't forget to like and subscribe as it keeps the channel going and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much.